What flew through prehistoric skies before birds and bats? Most people would immediately picture the flying dinosaurs they've seen in movies, but that's a major misconception. Movies like Jurassic Park famously featured these creatures, often portraying them as aggressive, leathery, winged monsters called Pteranodon. However, millions of years before modern birds even existed, a group of creatures known as pterosaurs dominated the air. They were not dinosaurs, and the actual Pterodactylus antiquus, the creature most people think of as a pterodactyl, was much smaller than you probably imagine. For over 150 years, scientists and the public have been tangled in one of paleontology's most persistent cases of mistaken identity. Walk into any museum gift shop and you'll find countless toys, books and posters featuring pterodactyls soaring through pre prehistoric skies. The problem is, most of these products are showing you creatures that aren't actually pterodactyls at all. This confusion runs so deep that even respected documentaries and educational materials perpetuate the mistake creating a scientific mix-up that spans generations. The term pterodactyl became the catch-all name for flying reptiles through a historical accident that began in 1784. That's when Italian naturalist Cosimo Collini first described fossilized remains found in the limestone quarries of Bavaria, Germany. These weren't the massive toothless giants you're picturing right now. The actual Pterodactylus antiquus, whose name literally means ancient wing finger, was roughly the size of a modern crow with a wingspan measuring just over three feet. Here's where it gets interesting. What most people call pterodactyls are actually dozens of different pterosaur species, each with unique characteristics that evolved over millions of years. Scientists have identified over 130 distinct pterosaur species, ranging from sparrow-sized creatures to behemoths with wingspans exceeding 30 feet. These animals lived across different time periods, inhabited various environments, and developed specialized hunting techniques that would make modern birds jealous. Hollywood and popular media cemented this, um, this misconception by using pterodactyl as a blanket term for all flying reptiles. Every monster movie from the original King Kong to Jurassic Park showed massive leathery winged creatures and called them pterodactyls. The entertainment industry created a mental image of prehistoric flying reptiles that bears little resemblance to the actual pterodactylus fossil record. These movie monsters were composite creatures borrowing features from various pterosaur species and scaling them up for dramatic effect. The real pterodactylus had sharp needle-like teeth, perfectly adapted for catching fish and small prey. They lived during the late Jurassic period, roughly 150 million years ago uh, in what is now Southern Germany. Fossil evidence shows these creatures had relatively short tails, long necks, and wing membranes supported by an incredibly elongated fourth finger. Their bones were hollow, filled with air sacs that made them lightweight, yet surprisingly strong. This naming confusion has led to fundamental misunderstandings about prehistoric ecosystems and evolutionary relationships. When people think all flying reptiles were pterodactyls, they miss the incredible diversity that actually existed in ancient skies. The truth about these creatures will completely change how you think about prehistoric life because pterosaurs weren't one type of animal, but an entire group that dominated aerial environments for over 150 million years. The family tree of prehistoric life holds a shocking secret that demolishes everything you thought you knew about flying reptiles and dinosaurs. Most people assume pterosaurs were simply flying dinosaurs, a natural extension of the terrible lizards that ruled the land. This assumption feels logical when you see them together in movies and museum displays, soaring above herds of triceratops and packs of velociraptors. The reality reveals a far more complex evolutionary story that challenges our basic understanding of prehistoric relationships. Pterosaurs and dinosaurs shared a common ancestor, but split into completely different evolutionary paths over 240 million years ago. Both groups belong to a larger family called archosaurs, 
which also includes modern crocodiles and birds. You can see evidence of this ancient relationship in their shared features like the antobital fenestra, a distinctive hole in the skull positioned in front of the eye socket of the Aya. They also both had teeth set in sockets rather than fused directly to the jawbone. However, these superficial similarities mask fundamental differences that developed over millions of years of separate evolution. The widespread belief that pterosaurs were flying, dinosaurs crumbles when you examine their fundamental anatomical differences. Dinosaurs possessed a unique hip structure that allowed them to stand upright, placing their legs directly beneath their bodies for efficient terrestrial movement. This upright stance became their defining characteristic, enabling everything from the massive sauropods to the swift theropods. Pterosaurs took a completely different approach, maintaining a sprawling posture with their legs positioned more to the sides of their bodies, an arrangement that better supported their aerial lifestyle. Pterosaurs developed hollow bones filled with air sacs throughout their bodies, creating an ultra lightweight framework similar to modern birds. This adaptation occurred through completely independent evolution, meaning pterosaurs and birds separately discovered the same solution to the challenge of powered flight. The air sacs extended beyond just the major bones, creating a pneumatic system that reduced weight while maintaining structural strength. This biological engineering made them perfectly suited for three-dimensional movement through ancient skies. Their revolutionary wing design relied on a massively elongated fourth finger rather than the multiple finger bones that support bat wings. This single finger became enormous, sometimes measuring several feet in length and served as the primary structural support for the wing membrane. Pterosaurs also possessed the pteroid bone, a unique wrist bone found nowhere else in the animal kingdom. This specialized bone helped control their wing membranes during complex flight maneuvers, giving them precise aerial control that dinosaurs could never achieve from the ground. Most people wrongly classify pterosaurs as dinosaurs when they represent something entirely different, a separate branch of archosaurs that conquered the skies while their cousins dominated the land. These anatomical marvels reveal just how perfectly pterosaurs adapted for flight. Hidden within pterosaur fossils lies evidence of biological engineering so advanced it puts modern aircraft design to shame. These ancient creatures achieved something that took evolution millions of years to perfect again powered flight by vertebrates. Pterosaurs became the first backboned animals to master the skies, accomplishing this feat roughly 50 million years before birds even existed. Their anatomical innovations reveal a level of specialization that challenges our understanding of what's possible in vertebrate evolution. The remarkable flight adaptations of pterosaurs created creatures perfectly engineered for aerial dominance. Their respiratory system operated through a network of air sacs that extended throughout their entire bodies, much like modern birds, but developed through completely separate evolutionary pathways. These air sacs created an ultra lightweight, yet incredibly strong framework that made powered flight feasible for animals of their size. The largest pterosaurs achieved wingspans exceeding 30 feet while maintaining the structural integrity needed for active flight. Pterosaur wings were not simple flaps of skin stretched between bones. The wing membranes contained a sophisticated internal structure reinforced by actinofibrils, tiny fibers that provided both flexibility and strength during complex flight maneuvers. These tough fibers allowed pterosaurs to control their wings with remarkable precision, enabling them to perform aerial stunts that would challenge modern pilots. The membranes themselves were robust and complicated structures, probably resistant to tearing and damage during aggressive hunting or territorial disputes. Their enlarged brains contained enhanced visual processing centers that reveal these creatures were intelligent aerial predators, not clumsy gliders struggling to stay airborne. Pterosaur brains featured small olfactory bulbs, but massive optic lobes, indicating that sharp vision and precise motor coordination mattered far more than detecting scents. 
This neurological specialization allowed them to track, prey, navigate complex three-dimensional landscapes and execute the split-second decisions required for successful aerial hunting. Recent research demonstrates that pterosaurs could actively flap their wings and perform complex aerial maneuvers rather than simply gliding on air currents. Their keeled sternum provided anchor points for massive pectoral muscles that powered their wing beats. They achieved various flight styles, including gliding, soaring, and powered flapping flight, adapting their techniques to different hunting situations and environmental conditions. When grounded, pterosaurs walked on all fours, using their forelimbs for support while keeping their wing digits elevated and protected. The hollow bones and sophisticated respiratory systems of pterosaurs prove they were master aviators, perfectly engineered for three-dimensional movement through ancient skies. These adaptations allowed them to dominate aerial environments for over 150 million years, making them one of evolution's greatest success stories in powered flight. Their biological innovations reveal just how remarkable these fuzzy covered creatures actually were. Recent fossil discoveries have uncovered a prehistoric secret that's rewriting textbooks and challenging everything we thought we knew about ancient animal coverings. For decades, scientists and artists depicted pterosaurs as scaly leather-winged reptiles soaring through Mesozoic skies. Museum displays showed them with bare lizard-like skin stretched over their wing membranes and bodies. This image seemed logical given their classification as reptiles, but exceptional fossil specimens have revealed a completely different reality that transforms our understanding of these ancient flyers. The revolutionary discovery of pycno fibers changed everything we thought we knew about pterosaur appearance. These hair-like structures covered pterosaur bodies and were preserved in remarkable fossil specimens found in locations with perfect preservation conditions. Pycno fibers appeared as dense, filamentous coverings that extended across much of the pterosaur's body, creating a fuzzy appearance that contradicted decades of scientific illustration. These structures weren't simple scales or smooth skin, but complex filaments that gave pterosaurs a distinctly mammal-like or bird-like appearance. Scientists continue debating whether these structures relate to feathers fur or represent something entirely unique to pterosaurs. Some researchers propose that pterosaur filaments might share evolutionary origins with dinosaur proto feathers, suggesting a common ancestry of body coverings that extends back to early archosaurs. Others argue that pycno fibers evolved independently, representing a separate solution to the challenges of temperature regulation and flight control. This ongoing scientific debate highlights how much we still don't understand about prehistoric animal coverings and their evolutionary relationships. The 2018 discovery of melanosomes in pterosaur fossils revealed that these creatures had colorful patterned bodies rather than the uniform browns and greys typically shown in reconstructions. Melanosomes are microscopic structures that once contained pigments providing direct evidence of coloration in animals that died millions of years ago. These findings suggest that pterosaurs displayed vibrant colors and complex patterns that served various biological functions beyond simple camouflage. Sordis pilosus provides some of the clearest evidence of dense body covering in pterosaurs. This species name literally means hairy devil, reflecting the obvious presence of filamentous structures preserved in the fossil. The specimen shows extensive pycnofiber coverage across the body and limbs, creating a picture of a creature that looked more like a fuzzy bat than a scaly lizard. These fuzzy coverings likely served multiple functions, including temperature regulation, waterproofing during fishing activities, and possibly sexual display during mating seasons. Hair-like structures covering pterosaur bodies challenge everything we thought we knew about prehistoric coverings, revealing a world far more colorful and complex than previously imagined. These discoveries transform pterosaurs from cold-blooded, scaly reptiles into warm-blooded, fuzzy creatures that maintained active lifestyles and sophisticated behaviors throughout their remarkable 
150 million year reign over ancient skies. The scope of pterosaur diversity becomes clear when comparing specific examples. Pterodactylus antiquus from the late Jurassic had a wingspan of roughly three and a half feet, while Pteranodon longiceps from the late Cretaceous reached wingspans up to 22 feet. These represent just two of over 130 pterosaur genera that adapted to diverse niches over 150 million years, each developing unique hunting strategies, body sizes, and ecological roles that allowed them to dominate prehistoric skies. The ancient world was far more complex and fascinating than popular culture suggests. These flying reptiles, now known as pterosaurs, occupied skies long before bats and birds, their diverse forms preserved in rare Lagerstätten fossils that continue revealing secrets about one of evolution's greatest success stories in vertebrate flight.